Welcome to my Python beginners course. I am Sexweb, a developer and freelancer. Here I am to teach Python in a very beginner friendly way to you. So in this course we will learn introduction, basic variables, data types, operators, conditional statements, loops, list and how to create functions in Python. The benefit of this course are it is very easy to learn and it is designed as beginner friendly. This course is free of cost. Tasks and assignments are there according to the industry this course has been designed and the short time span you will learn python so if you are thinking that you will purchase or you will continue this course then thank you to all so let's see the introduction of python so first of all we have to know what is python python is an interpreted object oriented high level programming language with dynamic semantics what this means this means that Python is an interpreted language. If you know C, C++, that's are the compiler oriented language. But in Python, to, for compile, we use interpreter. Okay. And it supports object oriented and it is high level programming language. So the syntax of Python are very easy to know. This is why here I, am, here I have wrote that Python is very easy to learn because the syntax are very easy and you will remind it shortly. So let's see uses of Python. Why we are learning Python and what are the uses of Python? Python use in web development. Python have many excellent frameworks like J like Flask, Django that are using in web development, system scripting, data science and AI, which is a vast field, and desktop application development. So in this today's lecture, we will learn how to download Python and in this course we will use python ideally that is the by default python text editor or python ide so let's see how to download python so first you have to go open google and just write python download and in the first website you can see python.org just click on it and here you can see python 3.1.11 download so click on this button and your download will be start from here so I am cancelling this because I have already downloaded it. So after download, you have to just install, you have to install the Python as you can install any type of software like here. Just click on the double tap on it and I, uh, I am seeing uninstall. But if you are new and if you are newly downloading Python, then you will see install option so just click on install and install it as any type of software are installed okay after installing just go to your search and you have in search search here python and here you can see python ideally 3.11 click on this and right here print Python. So you can see I can run Python code. So your Python has been installed in your computer and you are ready to continue this course and you are ready to run your Python program. So in this lecture, we will learn how to write a Python code and we will see how to print something in Python. Okay. So let's open our IDLE. And to print something, you have to just write print function. Under this parenthesis, you have to write what you want to print. Like if I want to print this is Python course. And just enter it. So you can see that this is Python code has been printed. If you pr want to print any number like print 67. You can see 67 has been printed so this is how you can print anything in python so in this video we will learn variables what are the variables in python so variables are basically the containers for data just see for writing our python code we have to write we have to click here file and after that click on new file and write here x equal to 5 y 
equal to 6 next print x and print y save this i am saving it in my python folder variable dot pi and after this click on the run and run module so the code that we have written will be run here so as you can see this is printing 5 and 6 but what we have written here x and y so what is this here x and y are the variable and x are the container for the data 5 okay so 5 is containing into x if i uh, if i share this picture with you like if we are if we are defining a equal to 5 what does mean now a, we are we are creating a space in our memory and we are naming it with a and under this we are saving 5 okay so whenever we have requirement of 5 we can call it using the name a this is why variables are made so uh, if we require 5 or 6 in our program we just have to write x or y so these are the variable and these are the use of variables okay so in this lecture we will learn what are the data types so the before like in the before lecture we learned that wh what is variable now variable are the container for storing our data next what are the data type now what type of data we are storing in the variable is called data type so in python there are mainly six type of data types six data types and apart from that there are lot of data structures those we will learn later but in this lecture in this course we will mainly uh, we will mainly discuss about integer the integer data type are like numbers okay 30 50 60 1 to 100 100 200 1000 these are the integers float float means the floating point numbers okay like 1.0 15.65 or minus 1.25 etc complex number if you are belonging from math then you know what are the complex number is like imaginary part okay a number containing an imaginary part these are the complex number next string string are any type of text data okay the data type the, those are text are the string next boolean and none so mainly in this course we will discuss about integer float complex and string so let's see and let's see the data types so here i am creating a new file and here i am writing x equal to 5 j y equal to apple and z equal to 5.6 let's see the type so print and here i am using the type function and under this type function i am writing the variable there x type of x so what is this what is this indicating now this is this is uh, telling that now let's print the type of x what type of data x contains okay print type of sorry type of y and print type of z and let's save this data type dot pi so what is x x is integer y is string and z is float so let's see run this module or run this code so here you can see x is integer y is a string and z is a float so this is how we can we can determine the type of a variable okay what type of data are saved in a variable we can determine using the type function 
So in this lecture, we will learn how to take input from the user and print it. So let's open ideally and here I am opening a new file. So let's see how to take input from the user. For taking input, I am declaring a variable x. Let's write simply x equal to input function. This will, sorry, this will take input from the user. Okay. And next print x. And under this input function, I am writing enter your input. Enter your input. Save this. Let's run this module. So here you can see this enter your input. So here I have to enter my input. Let's write 10 and enter it. So you can see that this is printing 10. Okay. This is how you can take input. But remember this, remember this, that this input you are taking is by default in string mode. This is not in integer mode. Okay. The 10 I have got, this is actually the string. Actually, I am getting this 10. Okay. Not this 10. Not this 10. So for taking integers, for taking, for taking a string, you can use this input, enter your input or enter your name, etc. But if you are taking a number as input, so you have to specify the type casting. Okay. You have to write this input in the integer function. Okay. This will take now a integer. So run this and let's type here 50. So this is now printing 50 and I, I sure that you have some confusion here. So let's see, I am taking here input under the integer. And I am taking here input, just uh, input and same I am writing enter your input. And let's print the type of x and print the type of y. So here you can see in the x I am I am getting the input under the integer function and in, in y I am taking the input itself. Okay. I am not putting it under any function by default input I am using. So let's see what is gives us. So run module. First I have giving 10 and second also I am giving 10. So here x equal to 10 also and y equal to 10 also. But here you can see x is a string and y is sorry x is integer and y is string. Why? Because I am typecasting here x but I am using the by default input it in y. So y is telling us that y is a string. Okay. This is how you can take any type of input from the user whether it will be integer or string. So in this lecture, we will see Python operators. So what are the operators? So operators are used to perform operations on variables or values. So if you know math, so you know what is the operators. Okay. So there are mainly four types of operators. And besides these four types, there are also many types of operators in Python. But in this course, we will mainly discuss among these four type of operators. And these four type of operators are important for you. So first of all, arithmetic operator. Arithmetic operators are used to perform arithmetic operations like plus, minus, multiplication, division, floor division, and mod. This uh, this symbol is used to to determine a mod, and this will be <coughs> this will determine the square root. Okay, the square. Sorry, the square. Then assignment operators. The assignment operators are used to assign a value in a variable. Okay, like equal to plus equal to, minus equal to, like that. 
comparison operators so comparison operators are used to compare between a variable and a value or among two variables like greater than less than equal to equal to not equal to greater than equal to less than equal to etc and logical operators are to perform logical operations among the uh, conditions like and or not what are the and or not we will discuss here we will discuss later when we will uh, read the if else statement but in this video let's see what are the plus minus arithmetic operators company and assignment operators okay so here open a new file and let use the assignment operator so why the why assignment operator is used to assign a value so i am assigned x equal to 5 so i am assigned 5 in x so here assignment operators is using okay next let's assign another value y equal to 6 and let's perform arithmetic operation so let's print x plus y x minus y and so on x multiply y x division by y and x root division by y x square of y so let's see what will be the output so at but before that i have to save it in my folder python folder and save it as operator dot pi let's run this code so here you can see this the first print is printing 11 so 5 part 6 at the addition of 5 of 6 is 11 okay the next one is minus so it will print minus 1 next one was the multiplication so 5 and 6 multiply is 30 next was is the division so it is printing the division and next was next one was the flow division so flow division actually return the integer okay and the th the last one was the square root so 5 square root 6 so sorry square root not square root square 5 5 to the power 6 is the 1 5 6 to 5 okay so you saw the uh, arithmetic operators next what are the operators next operators are the assignment operators so you see that i am using here assignment operator and if i write x plus equal to 3 Let's see what will be the output. Print x. Not here. Let's print x here. Print x. Save this code. Run this code. So here you can see x is now 8. So what the plus equal to value, the what the plus equal to operator mean? Now it will operate, it will add extra 3 in the previous value of x okay and assign the new value in x so the same with the mi minus equal to plus equal to multiply equal to so hope you understand this and the rest operators are assignment uh, comparison operators and logical operators what we will see in the if else video so this lecture is for this is for today So in this video we will learn python conditional statement and basically we will learn if else statement here so what is the if else statement and why we use for in python let's see at first create a new file and let's see why we use if else statement so let's assume there is a block of code there is a block of code and there is a condition that if the condition is satisfied then the code should be done otherwise the code should not be done then what we will do we will use if else statement here okay so let's see i am i am 
taking a variable 6 and b equal to 3 and there is a condition that if a is greater than b then it should print then it should print then it should print a is greater so here you can see that i should have a print statement and here i should print that a is greater but the print statement should execute if a greater than b otherwise the print statement should not execute so here i will use if statement so how to write the if statement here you have to write if next you have to give the condition and next colon and under it you have to write the code that should execute if the condition is satisfied so what is the condition here the condition here is if a greater than b and what should be the code here now a is greater so i am copying the code and paste it so let's run this code and before this as you know i have to save it so let's save it here if and run the code so here you can see a is greater next let's let's make b greater okay let's make b greater so here the condition is false let's see the code so here you can see the code is giving blank this is not printing anything so here the print statement did not execute because this statement is false now what if what if there is a by default statement by default code so here if a is greater than b else print a is not greater save it run it so here you can see now a is not greater so what is else means now if this condition is true then execute this course otherwise if this condition if this condition is false then execute this code so this is the working of if else now the question is if there is multiple condition here you can see there is only one condition next if there is multiple condition like uh, if a greater than b then print a is greater if b greater than a then print b is greater otherwise print a and b is same so here you can see there is two conditions so what if there are multiple conditions what you should use so here i should use else if so what is the syntax of else if or elif so if condition next the code that should be executed here next l if and the condition the second one the second condition then the code that you should execute and else here the code that is execute if these two conditions are false so let's code it here you can see if a greater than b then print a is greater now i am taking a leaf and the condition is if b greater than a then print b is greater and now if these two conditions are false that means if a is not greater than b or b is not greater than a so what will be the con the, what will be the condition here so a and b is same let's save it run the code and you can see here b is greater 
so this is how you can use you can use multiple conditions in if else in if, if else or if elif else like that so this is the so this is the use of elf if else elif etc and there is a task for you the task will be given to you after this lecture so try to solve the task and after this video after, sorry after this lecture i will solve the task so try it yourself otherwise see the next video of this course so before this lecture i have given you an assignment where you have to solve this question using conditional statement in python so if you are not able to do this let's see how to solve this question so what is the question take student marks as input so here you have to in take input from the user as marks and print the grade according to it what is the grade so there are the condition that if the marks is so let's so if the marks is greater than equal to 90 then it you should print a if the marks is greater than equal to 80 so you should print b like that and if the marks is less than 40 then you have to print fail so let's create so here let's see how to code this so at first i am taking a variable name marks and i am taking a input using as integer okay so input as integer let's let's use the if marks what is the condition if marks greater than equal to 90 then it should print then it should print a and if the marks if the marks is greater than equal to if the marks is greater than equal to 80 then print b if the marks sorry here i have to use elif okay here i have to use elif elif is used to simplify multiple condition so elif if the marks greater than equal to 60 then it should print p and elif if marks is greater than equal to 40 then you should print d else you have to print fail so let's save this and run this code first of all here i have to input i have to give an input like 60 let's see the marks is the grade is c okay so again let's run the code let's give an marks of 30 and it should see us fail okay so this is how you have to code this and now i think you are able to solve the assignment so solve it now so in this video we will see python strings so for seeing the python strings let's open our file and so what are the strings strings basically are the text okay so in python you can write string under single quotation or under double quotation that's your choice so for assign a string in a variable we actually use single quotation like abc or you also can use double quotation like that xyz okay so let's see print x and print y save it in my python folder string dot pi and run the code so you can see abc and xyz so these are the string if i print the type of x so let's run this code 
you can see now the type of x is string okay so this is how you can assign a string in a variable okay so and if you want to if you want to write multi line string like x y z my name is so if you write this type of multi line string you have to add three quotation okay like this three quotation so this is actually the multi line string now if i print x run the code you can see my multi line string has been printed so this is how you can write multi line string in python but strings are actual arrays okay so you can you can access any character of a string by its position actually the position of the string starts from here so the x the x is the the x the position of the x is 0 next one next z is the 2 so you can access any character by its position so if i write here print x of like this print x of 0 okay so what it will print it will print actually x because x is the position of y zeroth position of y okay if i write 2 so what it will it will print let's see 0 1 and 2 so it will actually print z okay so save it run it you can see it is printing z so this is how that uh, is the characters of the string are presented with indexing the string is actually a array okay so when we will read loop you will see how to loop through string if you want to print the length of the string so let's increase the length of the string if you want to print the length so you can use the length function okay so let's l equal to length of y and print l save it run it you can the you can see the length of the string is 13 okay let's count the length 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 so the this is how you can see the length of a string if you want to see if a word is present in a string or not so let's see i am writing here happy birthday happy birthday hi and this is python okay i know this is the sentence has not any meaning but this is for example okay so let's see if i see if i check happy is the present happy is present in the string or not so you have to write this happy quotation happy in y let's see the output this is giving me true so what this means happy is present in the string if i say you demi you demi is present in the string y or not so let's you can see udemy is not present in the string okay so this is how you can check a word is present in a string or not let's see if you want to check if a word is not present in the string so here you will type not in okay so this will return true because udemy is not present in the string so this is become true so here i am checking if this word is not present in the string okay so this is the string methods and this is the functions regarding string that you can use in python so in this lecture we will learn what is loops in python so let's create a file first and let's see what is loop loop actually if you see the time loop movies so what happens in this time loop movies that a uh, incident is occurred after uh, again and again continuously so this is called loop so in this programming also 
programming also if you want to execute a code again and again continuously if you want to execute a code again and again continuously till a condition is satisfied okay till a condition is satisfied it is called loop so if in our programming we require a code to execute again and again till a uh, to a, a rather to a, a specific condition then we use loop in spite of writing the code again and again okay so let's see an example of loop so if i write here print if there are, if i want to print 1 to 9 okay if i want to print 1 to 9 then i have two ways one writing print again and again like this one print two print three like this the second way is loop so in this video we will read for while loop in python okay so for writing while loop the syntax is while and here you have to give a condition next sorry sorry here you have to write the code and next after writing the code you have to increment the variable value and here you have to declare a variable value okay so let's see how this works so if i want to print 1 to 9 so i have to declare x equal to 1 like this next i have to write a condition while x less than equal to 9 so the condition is while x less than equal to 9 so while x less than equal to 9 the loop will be continue when the value of x will be greater than 9 the loop will stop okay so let's print x and increment the value of x x plus 1 so here x equal to 1 so here 1 will be printed next the value of x will be x plus 1 that means x will be 2 next the condition will be checked again so the condition will be true and next it will print 2 next the x value of x will be increment by 1 and it will be 3 again it will check and print the value of x thus like this code will print 1 to 9 so let's see save the code loop and run the code so here you can see 1 to 9 has been printed so this is the while loop and one assignment is for you using while loop so try to solve the assignment and let's attend the next lecture hi and in this video we will see for loop in python so in the previous video we saw why while loop work and the same thing is for for loop so next create a new file and see how for loop work and remember for loop have a fast use in python okay so for for loop you have to write like that for i in range 9 for i in range 9 and let's print i so this will print 1 to 9 okay so save it run the code so here you can see this is printing 0 to 9 this will printing 0 to 9 actually sorry 0 to 8 i have to write here in range of 10 because this is counting from 0 okay so let's see here you can see it is printing 0 to 9 so what the code mean that i is a variable 
which value is by default zero and it is running the loop through range okay through range what of range this range tells us that how my how many time the loop should run okay now it is telling that the loop should run when the value of i is 10 range okay 0 to 10 range okay so when the value of i will uh, what to say when the value of i will increment 10 times okay this will print i this is set it so you can define range with this like that 2 comma 10 2 comma 10 like this so what it will give us it will give us 2 to 9 okay you can do this like 2 comma 9 uh, sorry 5 comma 10 so it will print like this 5 to 10 okay so this is how you can use uh, for loop in python and also there are some use of python like in string i we have written string so if there is a string x equal to i am good boy and if you want to access all the characters of this string then you also can use for loop here so you have to just write for j in x and print j here what does means now the loop will uh, will go through this entire string and print the j so first of all j will be i second j will be blank third j will be a fourth j will be m so let's see this okay run the code here you can see i am good boy so like this you can loop through a string okay so i hope you understand the for loop and next i have a question for you let's print the even numbers let's print the even numbers to a given range to a given range what this means now you have to take input from the user of range 1 and range 2 and range 2 and take the even and print the even numbers even numbers between the range okay so this is a task for you i hope you all will complete this task otherwise you can take help from others okay so this that's video is today for all so in this lecture we will learn list in python actually list are used to store multiple data i'm sorry multiple data or multiple value in a single variable and before this we have read we uh, we learned uh, integer float okay string this type of variables which is store only a single data but in list you can store multiple type of data multiple values in a single variable okay so let's create a list so before that we are creating a new file and let's create a list so list one is our list and for creating list you have to give these brackets and under here you have to add the items like this okay so my items are apple a p p l e next mango and next is the grapes okay so let's see let's print the list print list one and print the type of list one save it so program python list one save it so it is saved next run the code here
okay run it okay so you can see the my list is has been printed and the type of the variable list one is actually a list okay next you can see we can store multiple data or multiple values in a list okay list allowed duplicate values i can add here apple also and let's print it let's save it print it so you can see we can add multiple data sorry duplicate data in a list okay so now the question is how to print the elements of the list so for printing each element of a list you can use a for loop for i in list one what this will do this will loop through the list and print the elements okay print i let's run the code so here you can see my elements has been printed and list are actually uh, uh, acts like address and list are ordered so you can access the element with its index indexing okay so in the index of list 0 there is apple this is the index of 1 this is the index of 2 this is the index of 3 so you can print this with the index also so print list 1 of index of 1 so it will print the mango actually so let's see okay this is printing mango like this like this okay and if you want to print the length of the list you can use the length function so like this print length list one run the code so you can see the list the length of the list is four okay let's see how to add item in a list so if you want to add an extra item in the list you have to write append okay list one dot append and here you have to add the item so my item is uh, banana okay save it run the code and again print the list okay, print list one let's see my item has been added or not so you can see my item banana has been added in the list okay this is how you can add a new item in a list let's see how to remove a list so for remove a list you can just simply use uh, okay so for removing an item in a list you can use remove so let's we have list one and if you want to remove an item from the list you have to just write list one dot remove and the item name what is the item name the item name is mango i want to remove mango okay run the code okay print it print list one save the code run this so you can see mango has been removed from our list okay and if you want to pop list one dot pop it will remove item from the behind print list one save it run the code so you can see the item has been printed so this is how you can use the list and these are the all functions of list So in this video we will learn about python functions what are the functions of python so actually functions are the code block okay block of code which only runs when it is called so what happens when we have to write a vast number of codes or code or sorry codes okay like um, we are writing 1000 line of codes then what we do we divide the code into functions and when we require the code we call the functions like that uh, let's assume that i have a code of even or odd number 
to determine even or odd number okay and i am writing a program of 2000 line of codes where the even and odd number program are used three times three times i am using the even and odd number of program so what happens here i have to write the same program same code for three times then what it will do it will it will increase the length of my code and the readability of my the readability of my code will be decreased okay this is why we use function so what function does we write the code in a single block and whenever we need the code we just call the block okay and our code works let's see how we can create a function in python so for creating a function we use the def keyword def function name so here my function name is uh, ot okay my function name is ot and under this i am writing print this is function so i have declared a function and under this function i have declared a code okay so whenever i need this code i just simply call the function so let's call the function ot like this okay let's save it in program python function run the code here so here you can see the print code has been executed okay so now let's see how we can use arguments in our function let's see we are taking a argument x okay and i have to determine the x is even odd or not okay so if if x mod 2 equal to equal to 0 then it should return false else it should return true so this function will return true or false if the x is odd okay so let's give it 6 and let's see what it's return us okay actually i have to write false in capital word here you threw in capital word okay let's run the code okay so i actually should print it print the function okay now this code will work okay so you can see this is returning us false so this is how you can return a value from a function and you can take argument here you can see when i am defining the function i am using a variable just a variable and when i am calling the function i am using the number okay let's see i am creating let's create a add function okay so def addition i am creating an addition function def addition and here i am taking two values a comma b sorry two variables and here let's return a plus b so this is a function of addition okay let's call the function i am calling the function of under c c equal to addition of addition of so give the value of a a is 3 b is 4 so what will we do 3 will be here so 3 will be act as a 4 will be act as b and it will return a plus b here okay so let's print c let's see run module and here you can see 7 so this is how you can create functions in python and use functions in python very easily